back tomorrow afternoon if you do not want to stand. My name is Linnell Glisson, and I'm the Executive Director of Community Services. And I'm very happy to hear you, um, see you all here today. Um, later on, you'll be hearing from Sam and Mason from Rumbus and Inova. And they, they asked me, is this meeting, is this town hall just for the gates? And I said, no, this is just for the people who have had problems with the gates. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you. Um, <laughs> I thank you for being here today and um, displaying just so much patience with our gates. Uh, I arrived here in November, October, November 2022, and that was one of the first things I heard about was the gates. <laughs> and so many of you have been long su suffering with them before then. Uh, but had to drill down on what was the, where were the gate failures? So I worked with our um, service provider who does the maintenance on our gates and learned that it was the operating system that, that we're having the most trouble with. And that is the system that reads your device and then communicates to open the gate. Um, so once we learned it was the operating system, uh, management submitted a project process request. I'm going to give you a bit of the history of how we arrived to today. So that's what, that's what we're going to go through first. Oops. <laughs> there we go. So in 2023, management submitted a project process request that was approved by the board. And then a task force of uh, committee members was assembled. Um, the task force include, I'm going to switch on and off my glasses because they're not my normal readers. Um, the representatives, there was representatives from buildings and grounds, the technology committee, the reserve subcommittee and management. Um, this task force um, met frequently and developed a request for proposal that included all the requirements. And during that time, they did a lot of um, homework reaching out to other communities that are gated to find out what systems they used. Um, and then after the request for proposal was developed with the included requirements, a scorecard was developed with our must-haves. We then went through some vendor demonst demonstrations. We had an extensive vendor list at the beginning. We went from eight vendors to five after review. And we, um, some of the communities we reached out to that had 12 or more gates were anywhere from California, Arizona, or Florida. So we really did research and then we took their, the systems they used and scrutinized them through the review process. And then we landed um, on the, on the uh, Providers that you see on the screen, ABDI, Bercada, Butterfly MX, LiftMaster, and Rumbus. We did demos, multiple demos of all these systems, and we reviewed their responses. Uh, we landed um, ultimately after reviewing all the requirements, uh, we landed on the Rumbus system. The Rumbus camera system is a, is a cloud-based system, and that was that was a non-negotiable requirement. That eliminated a few of them. Uh, scalability also was a non-negotiable requirement. Rumbus will allow the association to expand its camera system as well as expand its access um, system to pools, sports courts, and that will this will limit access to certain amenities to those who have the required credentials. Rumbus has 24-hour tech support and will support the training of staff and residents. The guest management system will allow management to track, track restaurant, fitness, and golf visitors and homeowners, and will have more flexi and homeowners will have more flexibilities with guest, visitors, contractors, deliveries, and Uber-type ser services. And they also had the most favorable pricing while providing the essential solutions that meet the association needs. So once we, um, the task force uh, 
selected Rumbus as their preferred service provider. It also had to go through the scrutiny of other committees before it reached the board. So it went through, um, so within the task force, there was representatives of all these different committees, but then it went to the full committee, including buildings and grounds, the full technology committee and the finance committee. And then once uh, it, it was recommended by the full committees, uh, we brought it to we brought a request for proposal to the board, and it was submitted and approved by the board on November twentieth, twenty three. Screen. Um, and then the the contract was sent to our attorney for review. We were confident they could uh, that the vendors selected could deliver on all the all the requirements that we had, but we wanted to be sure it was in writing. So that took a bit of time uh, and a little bit of back and forth just to make sure all the requirements were included in writing in our contract. And then management signed that contract in February, well, I'm sorry, the board signed that contract in February, 2024. Some of the key features, one of the most important features it is it will work with your current devices. If you have a sticker on your vehicle, the RFID tag, the new system will work with that. You will not have to change it, which is super important because it would be quite a task to have, change out all the vehicles that, it, that come into our um, community. And your handheld device will also still work with the new system. Um, the system will be purged, however, so any of those old devices floating around there will not be functional. We are using the data from our current homeowner database, and each homeowner is entitled to four devices. Anything beyond that will be purged. Any vendors, any higher home or residents, none of those devices will work. We're only working with our current resident device database. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> I had to make sure I was on the right slide. Uh, some of the new features will be, uh, you'll be able to use your mobile devices for access. So that's coming and I will let the smart techie people explain that. Uh, the, there's new. There will be new guest access options. You can. There's QR codes that time out. Um, there, you can use those or new um, codes that can time out, and that can be used for caregivers, landscapers, housekeepers. So if you have a housekeeper that comes every Tuesday from two to four, that code will only work during that time frame. We're also getting new cameras, which is huge. There's, there will be cameras at every gate, and they will capture license plates and pictures of vehicles. And then the system will sort all that data so that we, um, we, it, it'll be easier for us to track uh, the, act the bad actors or people that maybe we don't want in the community. And there's also 24 seven technical support. What I really like, and like, like I said, I'll have the techie guys explain this, but one of the challenges with our current system is we don't know what's not working. And so we have to go through multiple steps to get to drill down to what's not working. With the new system, it self diagnoses where the issue is. And if it's a hardware issue, it will tell, tell us that, you know, perhaps, perhaps it's the white, wire that got disconnected at this particular gate, it will tell us those things so we don't have to spend so much time figuring out what went wrong. What will stay the same are, are, is our reciprocal agreements with other San Sun Lakes communities, and all gates will remain open. We're not closing any gates. One thing we're looking at during this project is some of the homeowner only gates have two lanes. And so that's a little unnecessary and redundant. So we're going to um, narrow it down to just one lane and then we'll close off the second lane. Emergency vehicles will still be able to get through that one lane, but there's no reason to have the two lanes at some of these homeowner only entries. 
your devices will stay the same. I want to be clear on that. You will be able to use the same device that you currently have. Um, we will st what, what also will stay the same is we'll still have challenges with the equipment. Sometimes the equipment breaks or sometimes someone runs through a gate arm. Those types of things, this system's not going to fix all the problems. We will still have the hardware problems. Um, recently, I know you're not going to be able to see this, but recently Champagne was um, shut down for a number of days because the control board failed. Um, thankfully, we had one on hand because one of the things we're doing is stocking on the, the, um, the equipment that fails often so that we don't have to wait for it to come through the supply chain. So we have um, some of the frequently broken equipment in stock over at the maintenance yard. Um, so once we found out this was the problem, we were able to quickly change it. But those things will still happen. So there, it's not a, a silver bullet with the new gate system. What our next steps are is our transition plan. plan. We are going to install the new operating system at the lesser used gates, uh, such as Mossy Rock or Teakwood over off of Price. And um, they will be, they'll be tested to ensure they work, and then we'll go from gate to gate. Um, we're not going to do it in one fell swoop because we want to ensure that each gate is working correctly before, before we move on to the next uh, gate. The time frame, it's going to take two to three months for full transition, and that includes with the gate, uh, the operating system, the cameras, and the, and the guest access. So I ask for your continued patience. As we go through the transition, we'll keep you up to date weekly in the stay in the loop as well. So I'm going to ask, I think uh, Mason. I think you're. I think you're next up in the slides. Mason's going to go over the Rumbus system briefly, and then Sam from Anova will um, share the Anova side of the transition. So, awesome. Thank you, Mason. Thank you. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Good. Awesome. So I will go over, that was an awesome overview from Linnell. Um, I'll go over the Rhombus platform just briefly, and then we can let Sam go into, oh, sorry about that. Not a huge public speaker, so we'll get through it together. All right, so we'll go over the first slide here. So Rhombus is a complete cloud-based physical security platform. So we have both cameras and access control. It's all centrally managed, uh, makes it much easier for the admin side of things and users alike. So Oh, this is a little bit of a different slide than uh, I was thinking we had here, but um, everything is very centrally uh, managed, so it's going to be very easy. One of the main focuses here was keeping things very similar from a user experience, so I saw a lot of head nods there, but all of the current devices will work, so that transition becomes very easy there. Um, as far as, again, something Linnell already went over, but the system is self-diagnosing, so if there is any issue, there's never going to be a time where gates are down for an extended period of time. Um, cameras the same as well. Linnell mentioned the ability to label bad actors. So if somebody does come on site and creates an issue, we are able to label those individuals. One thing that's worth noting is all of that information is locally stored. So Iron Oak's information is not cross-referenced with any database or anything like that. Everything is locally stored. So um, just complete data privacy. Nobody has access to cameras or gates um, outside of Iron Oaks admin. Thank you. Um, so the rhombus difference is the three Ps. So platform, um, very easy to use. Most of you folks won't have to interact with it much. Um, so that'll be a good thing. Uh, for those of you that do, extremely easy to interact with. Um, performance is twofold, so I know there's been some performance issues with the gates currently. Um, again, real-time firmware updates, so if anything is detected, uh, it does happen from time to time, but hardware issues are very rare. So in the case that anything does happen, we're able to remotely troubleshoot a lot of these issues. And then again, Rhombus support is extremely strong, so 24-7, 365 uh, US-based support if anything does occur. Oops, sorry. Um, and then partnership has a couple facets to it. 
Um, Sam with Anova is our partner here um, that we love working with, um, a technical expert, partnership on the support side as well. Um, I think that's one of the strong parts about Rhombus. Um, and we're just extremely happy about this partnership with Iron Oak. So um, just a couple of those things that we want to touch on. A couple of these things um, are going to be utilized by the community. So we do have the option for license plate recognition at gates. Um, so if we want to label individuals as authorized or unauthorized individuals, um, you know, after some incident, we have the ability to do that. Um, a lot of these features are, um, you know, we can take it or leave it, but some of the features here that are listed, the community will be utilizing. Um, and then this is the hardware portion. So Rhombus is the manufacturer of the hardware, the operating system, so to speak, that's being switched out. Um, this is what the readers look like, just so you know. Um, it's going to look very similar and feel very similar to the entry experience that you have now with just a higher degree of reliability. And then this is just some customer feedback. Um, so we have a 99% renewal rating, so just a testament to folks loving Rhombus and growing with us over time. And then these are some forward-facing customers, so some folks that we work with, just so you know that you're in good hands, larger organizations with um, you know, extensive deployments of both cameras and access control. Another thing Linnell touched on that's really good is the scalability of Rhombus. So we're starting with the initial RFP with gates and the handful of cameras that we have proposed, um, but that's very easy to scale out over time. So, you know, um, kind of easy to add coverage to the community over time where, where that is reasonable. Sorry, I'm skipping through some of these. This is kind of our, uh, some of these don't make as much sense. So I'm going to pass this over to Anova. Um, Sam is going to talk about the technical um, installation and uh, certain technical aspects of the deployment. Thank you. Morning, all. So I won't bore everyone with the uh, presentation. I'll speak in broad strokes on what who Anova is and what we do. Um, and then get into how this process will work. The theme throughout really is we want to do this right the first time. We don't want to have to run into issues as we're doing deployments. So as Linnell mentioned, we will do one smaller gate first, um, put a period of time on that where we'll ask everyone to use that gate, you know, within reason, obviously you don't want, you know, rearranging your schedule to use that, but use that gate. Let us know if you have any feedback, if there's anything that you see or hiccups, um, but again, the theme throughout is going to be we want to do this right one time and have this last for the neighborhood for at the bare minimum the, less, the next 10 years, which is the, the warranty from Rhombus on all their hardware. Biggest differences here will be that right now, and I'm, I'm again, I said broad strokes, the way the system works is it all comes back to one central location. So it goes through the wires and network and it all comes back to one place. The software is housed here which is why there are some issues sometimes. Um, it's an older system. It needs to be upgraded. The updates, as Mason mentioned, are not automatic. They have to happen here on site. Um, that's all changing with Rhombus. All of this hardware just connects directly to the internet, similar to maybe one of your Nest cameras at home, and it just works. That is basically what this is. Now, obviously, there's a lot more features and functionality because it's a more commercial system, but in effect, that is how the system works. Um, we know that the most important things are for everything existing to remain in place. Um, I know that uh, Linnell in the neighborhood will be working with you all just to double check what devices you all have. Um, and if you need to enroll new devices, maybe you had a, an old fob or something that was working with a, a previous home you owned in the neighborhood, that'll be updated to make sure. And that's why we're doing that one gate as a kind of a test or maybe a you know, one location where we can kind of troubleshoot and find any mistakes and, and, and issues. Um, but, and so in going back and what Innova does, Innova, we're based in Southern California. We operate in 22 countries. We install all kinds of technology systems throughout. So everything from internet all the way down to obviously gate access and cameras and whatnot. Um, this project for us is, is super interesting because we're moving from a system that 
isn't all that old, but it is very antiquated when it comes to technology and moving to something that's going to make life easier for everyone. And where better to showcase that with 8,000 homes and, and, you know, at least, let's say, 10,000 folks that are going to be using the system. Um, that's pretty much my spiel. I want to open it up. I know there, there might be a lot of questions on how things work. Um, I don't know how we want to take the question portion. Yes. So we're going to open it up to questions. Sam, my, myself, or um, Mason will be able to field the questions. We'll be answering from here. Kelly has the microphone. We're going to ask that you, is that a good spot to line up? Okay. So if you could um, move to Kelly, that's so she's not pinging all around the room, line up behind Kelly with your questions, and we'll get to as many of these as we can. Kelly, you can get started. Good morning. Thank you for addressing this. This is the weak link in our community, and I thank you so much for fixing it. So a real simple technical question. All the windshield readers, RFID readers, will, will continue to work. However, sometimes I pull in, doesn't work, back up, doesn't work, move a little over to the side, it doesn't work, and then finally find a sweet spot where it works. That That is the op our current operating system Correct. problem. Is that going to be fixed? This is, no, 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 so this is one of the issues that we'll work with you on. So I need to, one of the things we need to understand, and maybe one thing I didn't mention is we're going to spend a week here on site to find out what is that issue? <clears throat> is that, sorry position of the reader or is that an issue with the software right now where it's reading it but not recognizing it so if it's an issue with the reader realignment that is an easy fix if it's a software issue that's already going to be addressed wonderful thank you a question probably for rhombus also what's the what's the cloud is it your own cloud or do you use amazon or what cloud do you use? aws, AWS. Amazon. okay what about the single point of failure then if the cloud goes down or our network connection what happens to us so great question actually no, no no that's that's a fantastic question so the two answers the first is on the access control hardware let's say that, first of all i know that uh the community has worked and there's fiber at, at each gate which is awesome um but let's say the internet does go down for any number of reasons the access controllers will work on the last updated uh, database that they were on. So let's say, you know, the internet went down at 1 p.m. and the last update to the database was at 12.30 since it's happening all the time. Let's say there was a user added or, a, you know, a new home was purchased in, in that 30 minute span. That won't work. But everything prior to that will work. Hi, I am uh, often come through the gates as either a bicyclist or a pedestrian. And I'd really rather not carry a key with me if I can use this smartphone. And I know you mentioned that it will allow smartphone access. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So you'll have the option um, and obviously working with, with Nell and, and her team to enroll your phone and have permissions on your phone to open any one of the gates when you're right next to it. Um, we are working on a way to make sure that you can do it via Bluetooth as well. But at the very least, there you can open up the app, strike it, and it'll open right up. Being third in line, your questions have already been asked. Right. Let me just, for some of us may not be tech savvy, can you explain the advantage of everything being in the cloud? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, I can, I can, yeah. So the advantage of everything being on the cloud versus uh, locally, correct? So a couple of things. When older systems, pretty much all systems, previous to, let's say, early 2000s, everything was local. There was a server somewhere, maybe here, maybe at one of the gates. Actually, the way that it works here right now is that there is a kind of a tiny server at each individual gate. Um, you, There's a lot of maintenance that goes in with that. There's constant updates that need to happen locally at each gate, and then also where the, <clears throat> where the main server sits. When everything is up in the cloud, what happens is, let's say we need to do a software update, or let's say there's a bug that needs to be fixed. That literally is a matter of just scheduling this. Now we can schedule it at 2 a.m. when there's less people using the gates. We can schedule them during the day and have there be no downtime. But the whole goal of this is to simplify the system, not only for installation and maintenance purposes, but also eventually in the future when there are updates. Um, another thing I don't think we 
fully mention well is that this period with rhombus there is no upcharge or there is no added charges for updates those just happen automatically over the air a more basic question what is the cloud well <laughs> i will be back here next wednesday for a seminar for about two hours no but uh, to, you know uh <laughs> quickly the cloud basically is instead of the server being here locally it's up in actually the question was asked before it's an amazon and it's distributed so let's say one of those data centers which never happens completely goes down there's 10 15 30 other ones that'll pick up the slack somewhere else yeah i know we're meeting about gates but is the monitoring and access system also going to be installed on various doors like for say the health club or swimming pool or locations like so that come to the pool side or fitness center meetings <laughs> for more information on that yeah, okay. but but the purpose, one of the reasons we went with this system is it is scalable. So I don't know how it's going to be scaled in other locations yet, but it will be. And finally, along with that question, there is a, a man gate alongside uh, many of the car gates where I don't know if I still have the key that was given to me eight years ago and whether it even works. Will those gates either be operable by uh by the system or do i not have to worry about that because i can open the main gate with my cell phone so that is so the pedestrian gates yes so the potential is there for them to be connected to this new system oh. mm -hmm. good morning thank you for being here and answering our questions uh, many of us own golf carts. Not all of us are golfers. The purpose of being in a gated community is to help with uh, traffic flow in and out of those gates and to help secure the community. What I'm finding, because I live on one of those busy streets, is that the gates are bypassed by the golf carts. Some of them at a very high rate of speed and with pedestrians and walkers and bicyclists, uh, it puts a lot of people in danger. So my question is, should those gates all need to be accessible by a member of the community by either a card or um, the app on the, on the cell phone to ensure that each member that's on that golf cart is coming into the community that is a member of the community or from a neighboring community will go in through the normal gate and be let in by the, the gate guard? So the, the solution for that problem can be solvable with our new operating system, but that's going to be more of a phase two of this, you know, determining how we're going to control the access of the golf carts. So I can't, that's not a direct, direct answer, but it is something that Buildings and Grounds has looked at. Well, currently the gate is cut off. I mean, they just so that everybody can go past it. I know it's an inconvenience for a lot of the golfers that want to get to their holes and when they're golfing on golf days, but we have to have to look at every, the community as a whole, in my opinion. Thank you. This is really scary because I actually understand what the cloud does. So. <laughs> my my uh, question is uh, more... Uh, what happens if we have a local power outage? Uh, do we have a, a reliable backup system for that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that that's also a great question. Yes, that was something that we added um, after going through the process and realizing that currently there is backup power for the gate controls, but not actually for like the head end equipment, which is the let's call it a server. Um, yes, we did. Ha we do now have that. And those, I believe, will last up to six hours. Hi. Uh, this is a rather selfish question, and 90% of you probably don't care. But I live on Nakoma, and Nakoma is referred in our house as a hell highway. And I want to know if the trucks are going to have easy access out somewhere, and is it still going to be 
on the Dobson exit? That's your question. That's right. I know, but I'm the Nakoma is there's many parts to Nakoma. So what gate are you do, do the gate that exits uh, out on Nakoma going south? So it'd be the south exit. <laughs> south Dobson. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Um, and, and 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 trucks run up and down our road. The biggest trucks I ever saw. I know. I don't they, because the south exit is open. To is the exit so the so that's not a selfish selfish question. I see that, and it's uh, it's a a question that we need uh, a problem we need to solve. But they will. St this is not going to stop people from exiting. The only exit that we have restriction is North Dobson. North Dobson, so the other side, yes. So Our every other side. gate in the community, trucks can get go right through without exiting. Yes, they can exit. Exit, not enter. Okay. Yeah. So is there is there a possible solution, or you don't know? Don't. That's okay if you say that. Right, I'll... right now, no. <laughs> but that's something we can certainly bring up to the Buildings and Grounds Committee to see if they we want to control the exit access. What we will be adding, though, is cameras, so we will see who we can track who is exiting the gates. That's good enough. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And I'll just I'll just expand on that just briefly. Uh, so the cameras that we put, I know one of the concerns that I've even noticed is the tailgating, which I'm sure may come up in questions. Um, while this solution right now doesn't solve the tailgating problem, what it does do is it, we have camera footage and license plates of anyone who does tailgate. So that we have a record and we have at least a starting point to go back and say, hey, you know, this license plate is now flagged. Anytime this license plate is caught at any gate, we're able to address that. Yeah, I um, go through the North Dobson gate and there's tailgating all the time. And, uh, Hopefully, there'll be some solution to that. Um, I guess the other question I had was the difference between Innova and, and you. It, it, it's really not clear to me. So Rhomba is the manufacturer, yeah. similar to, let's say, you know GE for your electrical panels at home, and we're the installer. Um, the nice part of this is Rhombus as a manufacturer is very involved in the process, which you know, maybe your current manufacturer or, or other ones that I'm familiar with, they're not as involved um, and they, they don't send reps out. And, and that's one benefit we have here. Hi, <clears throat> I don't hear that my question's been addressed, so I'll try to kick it into play here. I've lived here 23 years and we've been given many gate codes and none of them have ever allowed entry they, by ringing my cell phone so I can press number nine. And and that's the frustration. DoorDash delivers, caregivers, you say, okay, this is my gate code. And they go and they punch it in and it never rings my phone. That's, uh, I, I believe, the second thing that Linnell brought up in our communications, and that will be addressed. With, with codes, yes. I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, the uh, people who have multiple RFID readers on their windshields. I can't hear anything. Uh, I know I have two RFID readers because I'm involved with other communities that are gated. Sometimes the reader will read uh, at a normal distance, and then again, I have to uh, maneuver my vehicle so that the reader reads those. Do you, uh, will this be an issue for people who have multiple readers, RFID? No, their, it no. shouldn't. Now, that being said, I think what I'm hearing, which is universal here, is that some
I understand you correctly, were going to have as individual homeowners. Is that part of the software where we can uh, list an animal's name or a picture of an animal that if it gets lost, it's easier for patrol to identify? That's a great question, and that's a different software issue. So one of the things we will be looking at in the future is new HOA software in which those types of um, uh, you you can add that information into your profile, which is helpful to to not only you but to us. So it's not it wouldn't be with the gate software though. So the um, residents will not be able to list uh, people that they want to come into the community or. Well, that's a different. <laughs> that's okay. different than a pet, unless you want your pet to have an, a tag. No. Um, <laughs> So, but yes, you will have more control over who um, has access. So, okay. and and we'll be holding training sessions and even open houses out in communities, uh, open houses at community service where you we can help you upload the guests and and people that you want on your profile. When will the gate officers have their training with the uh, new devices? Well, we're the new operating system in the in the coming weeks. We're all going to get training. Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for being here. Good meeting. I have a question, Linnell. I think you said each residence would get up to four devices. Is that correct? Okay. So two cars, one golf cart, handheld. That's three of them. What is the criteria? for giving those out because we all know that some people have given their friends that live in other parts of the community around Phoenix, a card to get in golfing friends or whatever. And if they have a card currently, is that still going to work? Yeah. So that is such a great question that I don't know that I can answer off the top of my head. What is the criteria for what those homeowners do with those four cards? I know that, it's for the homeowner, and often they will give it to their children. But beyond that, it's not meant to be handed out to your landscaper or your mm, realtor <laughs> or, you know, so it's meant for the homeowners themselves to use. I'm just curious because we've um, had conversations in other meetings like this about security and that type of thing. And a lot of, uh, I don't know how many, but there are homeowners that have given a card to friends or other people that do not live in here. So I'm just wondering if this new system is going to address that or not. Yeah. So one of the ways that we're going to address it is through the guest, like giving a guest access. Um, they obviously won't be given a physical credential. They'll be able to open it with their phones, which I know might cause, you know, some folks that aren't technically minded issues. They can always go through the gate that has the, you know, uh, code that then calls the resident. But for folks that are a little bit more technical, that guest credential is something that goes on their phone. The only difference is it'll actually track and say, okay, this is the actual person who came into the neighborhood. They are a guest. They're not a resident. And then, you know, some, it, it does, I don't know how often it comes up here, but one of the questions sometimes is, well, you know, we have some type of security event. How many guests are on the property, either at the golf course or somewhere else? That'll help with that as well. Okay. And that's all great. But what about the people that currently have the card? Because if our cards are still going to work and there are people out there that already have a card that don't live here, are those also going to continue to work? So it's it's what we're going to do with the data received by that, that, that we don't have currently. So that card is swiped or that RFIT is read. We'll then have the license plate and the and a picture of the vehicle of the person using that. And if that doesn't line up with our homeowner database, then that's something we can solve through through just analyzing the data. Right. Yep. Thanks. You have to use a card to get out of the North Dobson gate. At one time, uh, it was set up so that after eight o'clock in the evening, guests could get out there. And I, my understanding is that's no longer the case. Is is there any thought about opening that up again for people to get out after eight o'clock? Mm. 
that's something I can certainly bring to the committees to review and then recommend to the board changing that. That's not something that this access system will change automatically. But as we progress through the transition and get comfortable with the new operating system, I'm sure some of these things may change for us. So, but I'll let the, uh, the I'll bring that up to the committees just to consider after we transition over. Thank you, Lynn, Lynn Ellen and the crew here. That's a very clear explanation of what's going on. First time ever here, I think, at uh, Iron Oaks. <laughs> we, we have some very fuzzy recollections, but my wife and I have been here for 17 years, and these gates have been a problem from all that time. Uh, small things, hardware things, clearly. Hardware alignment problems, maybe. But I just don't want those to get left behind in this uh, rush to technology. I tell you right now, the... Uh, the gates, the unmanned gates, where you uh, uh, resident gates, where you leave using your pass on the car, your RFID uh, card or sticker, that does not work as reliable as you think. And it might be, like you say, denial of service kind of thing, where it just doesn't read it, or it might actually be the positioning is not right. And I've got two cars which present a completely different windshield height and angle, and I had to take my RFID card, ID card for one car move it from the top left corner down to the bottom, almost a third the way over to the middle of the windshield, and it works much better there. But if it's up in the top left, it, there's no way in heck I can ever get it to do it except by driving directly at the sensor until the last minute and then flipping under the gate, you know? And the other thing, too, is that I think it's confusing, and it's gotten worse with the latest uh, gate mechanisms. We've got red and green lights on the gate mechanism, We've got red and green stop lights and, and, and go lights on the just the overall uh, display. None of them seem to work in any kind of pattern. It's just uh, whatever happens, happens. That confused residents and guests who don't know, can I, can I go or not? And once you start that stutter step at the gate, then the gate will come down. So I think those are mechanical things, hardware alignment issues probably, somewhat software-based need to look at that too soon because otherwise people the new system will get a bad reputation for the same old problems. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. And those are all good points and those are all on our to-do list. Once we get the operating system up and running, we will um, look at the other points of failure and the other issues with the hardware. So thank you. Thank you for the upgrade. It's long overdue. But it was alluded to earlier that there's a lot of breakage uh, in the current mechanisms of the gates. I live in Iron Oaks, and the Chandler Gate and the Riggs Gate, you could have your lunch there waiting for those gates to open. Is there anything in the budget to upgrade the gate mechanisms? This is a great system, but it's only as good as the gate op operators. Mm -hmm. So the operating, the, the, um, the equipment itself is budgeted for in the reserve study. So once we get our new operating system in place, we do have to look at, okay, so where are the other points of failure with our equipment or any, any of the other components that we can approve upon? So for the reserve study, I don't know that it's this year's, I know it's not this year's reserve study, but that's something that, that is um, budgeted for in the reserve study. And, and just to you know expand on that, I think one of the problems right now is that there's too many variables that that aren't defined. Once the server piece and the you know system operating system is is done, um, and we know that that's 100 percent working, then those problems will be a, a lot more clear. Me again. <laughs> so I have you've you've answered this partially in a couple of different answers with this, but um, my wife and I during the pandemic had a, a different type of a situation. My wife uh, ended up in the hospital up in, in, in uh, uh, clear up by Thunderbird Banner. And uh, I was home uh, kind of semi comatose in the bed and my wife had to call my doctor come down from Mesa, which he did at 2.30 in the morning. But is there a little easier method uh, to get somebody in the gate 
uh, like that. What Linda had to actually do was call our 84-year-old neighbor at 2.30 in the morning and have him drive out to the gate so that he could let my doctor in. The very short answer is yes. That will no okay. longer be an issue. Your okay. guests will have a code, a one-time use code they can get in. Okay, I have a couple of questions. You were mentioning tailgating and flagging tailgaters. And, mm -hmm. and I have a question about tailgating in general. A lot of times I come, say, to a busy gate like the North Dobson Gate, and there's a line of cars waiting to go out. Mm -hmm. And they go one at a time, you know, through the gate. Do you have to wait for the gate to close before you open it up again or else be flagged as a tailgater? I mean, sometimes yeah, that gate the, goes open the gate is the, and three, four people go through it. I have a, yeah. a gadget on my car, a device on my car. Do I have to wait for the gate to come back down again? Because that sometimes takes several seconds and and then wait for, you know, the gate to come down so that I can move up and open it up again. So, yes, <laughs> it, with our current operating system, yes, you need to for the, for the for the gate system to cycle through, it's got to come back down and then go back up. That's going to or really at least, slow things let, down. Let me, let me correct it. Or at least it needs to read your device so you'll see it come down and then pop back up. That's that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what was the other question? Oh, one other thing. Um, if you publish the telephone numbers of the three gates, it's a very important thing. I've, have I've, as... Um, people have used the panel and have called me. I've remembered those numbers and put an, uh, mm -hmm. an entry in my telephone book for Iron Oaks Gates. Mm -hmm. If I get a call and it says unknown person and it's late in the afternoon and I don't remember I'm expecting somebody, mm -hmm. I'm likely to let it go to voicemail and they're going to sit out there waiting for me. Uh, now it's my phone says Iron Oaks Gates or, and says that, I, oh, yeah, I better answer that call. Yeah, good point. And Connie, with uh, Connie, who is um, our new, does our new homeowner orientations, t tells each new resident just that. Enter, also, the, enter the phone number. And we have a few more people. So if you have an, one more. Well, one more question. One more I question. had a hard time getting the code. You know, it says enter your name or on mm -hmm. the panel or, or put a code number. It, I had to call a lot of people in the HOA to find out what my code was so that I could tell somebody, just dial that in and it'll call me on the phone. Can you tell people that? Your or code? Tell yes. somebody in the office to let that information out? Yeah, it's, it, yes, I will. <laughs> okay, thanks. thanks. I, speaking of community services, they're all in the back there, lined up, <laughs> got them lined up back there. They deserve such credit for handling all your phone calls and reprogramming devices and checking the gates daily. I want to thank them for their, and I'm, I'm, I'm just as excited for them as I am you to get this new gate operating system. <laughs> it's going to make everyone's lives easier. So thank you, team, for all that you've done <laughs> to get us through to this point. And I can't wait for the new systems uh, to make your lives easier. I know you answered a question a few minutes ago or at the beginning regarding uh, the golf carts scooting around the, the uh, gate arm. Um, but I'm not sure I heard the answer to that other than uh, security cameras. There are motorcyclists that don't even stop and go around the gate mm -hmm. arms, and they're only passing through the development because I, mm -hmm. I have followed them from one gate to the next. They're just coming through. Mm -hmm. And I don't see where security cameras are going to even catch that because it's not going to be somebody um, tail tailgating. It's not going to be an entry that was ever re registered in, in, unless the arm itself is mm -hmm. long enough to prevent that. I guess, you know, we're just going to have to live with that. Yeah. So there's, there's more challenges uh, to address after we get the new operating system. And that is one of them. So I, I wish I could answer today, but that is absolutely something we're going to look at and um, address after a new operating system. Relative to a question the gentleman before me had about uh, knowing the gate coming down, going back up and all, there was a short time where the North Dobson exit gate 
would flash a light when it read the second car reader and then the gate wouldn't come down and you knew you had that green light to go ahead. Mm -hmm. And that I think was extremely helpful keeping the mm -hmm. flow going both in and out of those busy gates. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen that for years, but something that I think- Yeah, that's separate than the gate operating system. So I don't have an answer okay. for that today, but that's definitely something we can look at once we have a new system in. My question is, if you register a phone or a couple of phones, does that count as part of your four devices? No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my question is, um, currently um, commercial vehicles are required to come through the main gate on Robeson, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, one of the one of the uh, manned gates. One of the manned gates. Is that going to continue as such? Yes. I thank you all for the presentation. Uh, very good information. Appreciate your being here. I have one question that's at the top of my list. The enhanced gate software is terrific. It's what long overdue but we still have the problem anybody can gain access to our community by coming to a manned gate, saying they're going to the restaurant, they're going to a reception, or they're going to visit someone. There is no procedure to vet these individuals. They get let in right now, basically, with sometimes a license plate notation. Most of the time, nothing. And as long as we have this full access, how are we going to attract these people with license plate cameras or an enhanced check-in procedure? because all the electronic security does nothing if you don't have physical security. Thank you. Thank you for that question, because our new guest access um, system will track uh, golf visitors and restaurant visitors and, and ones, as you say, we just, you know, oh, we're going to the restaurant, come on in. We're going to mark, they'll be able to attract, be tracked as a visitor to the restaurant they'll be able to be tracked as a visitor to the golf course. And one quick follow-up. So if we know a person has come in, do we get a timestamp when they leave? It will be tracked, yes. We can track when they leave, yes. Yep. Hypothetical. I have a contractor coming to do some work on my house. I give him a code so he can get in. Do I have to give him a code again tomorrow so he can come back? So the system's going to allow you to customize uh, your guest access. So if they're here for a specific job that's three weeks, you need them to be um, here Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can just uh, enter that data, and that's as long as their, their uh, code will work. And once he's there, can he go solicit business elsewhere in the community? Because he no. has a code, and maybe he can come back next week with the code. No, he'll, the code will only work for the time that you allow it, and he will be tracked. If they're soliciting, we'll know it, and we'll be, we'll be better able to track solicitors. Last question. Once you track it, what do you do with it? So you know he's there, you know who he is, you know what his car looks like, and then what? I don't, in what scenario? Were they just doing work at your home? Well, Nothing. At anybody. If somebody, they're doing somebody, somebody comes in, you track him. So you have his license number, you have a vehicle description, and you don't know where he's going, what he's doing. He says he's going to play golf. He's not playing golf. He's going to go do something else. So, what do you do with the information? So I think that's where, and I defer to you on this, but I, I think that's where the community comes into play. If you notice someone who looks suspicious, you report it. What happens is we get to flag the license plate. So anytime they enter any gate, whether it's manned or not, immediately there will be a little notation or an email or something that goes out to security that will let them then take an action. Uh, you're talking about being able to put this on a telephone and I understand you know, the idea how that's going to work. What security, what anti-hacking mechanisms do you have in your system so that if you get hacked, we don't all have a bunch of this information taken by somebody somewhere and sold and used? Do you want to take that? Yeah. 
So great question. Um, there's actually a couple things in the solution. Uh, one good point to note is that Rhombus was actually founded by cybersecurity experts. So they came from a cybersecurity background. Um, we have annual audit attempts and we're you know, SOC 2 compliant. We have all types of safeguards in place. And then within the system too, and this um, was a good point for another question that was brought up, but everything is logged within the system. Every change, um, every software change, every entry event, Literally everything is in our audits and logs. Um, so no bad actors can get in the system and change settings or uh, do anything without the community knowing. Everything is logged within the system. Unless they hack your system, then what? So what, what's your security against you getting hacked? Uh, we have annual audit attempts. So we have actually folks that we hire to try and do that to bolster our physical security. Okay. And we have a stellar cybersecurity record. So we have never had any penetrations. You're constantly testing your own. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. One last thing, and this may not be yet within your bailiwick, but most people's GPS sends them to the North Dobson gate to get in. Is there any way to get that information to Google, Siri, whoever, and say, don't send them, you know, that's not a, that is not a public road. Yeah. Briggs is. I was just going to say that happened to me this morning. So, yeah. yes. <laughs> so we are working on that, but we don't control Google, so we can't. I wish we could, but communi communications department is working on that. Good morning. Thank you for being here. A lot of those things were good. However, none addressed my issue. I'm in the tops in the Glenburn Gate. Mm -hmm. There are no codes. There's no keypad. So that's because it's a homeowner only gate. So how do I get people to come in? They have to go through a manned gate. Right. So mm -hmm. my daughter went to the Robeson Gate, could not find me. It's three miles. Mm -hmm. And I'm the first house inside the, the mm -hmm. Glenburn Gate. Yeah. Yeah. So she left. Yeah. And I don't blame her. I couldn't find it either. Coming I'm, in. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, all the guests, uh, those are ho homeowner only entries. So, yeah. If you have if each homeowner's, if you want your daughter to have one of the devices, you can give her one of yours. I have to purchase that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. I know. I know you. I'll call you. We'll we'll work it out. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like it looks like there's two more questions. One on the screen, and then um, a gentleman right here. What is the? One number for the call box. Oh, the call box number is only one. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we talked a lot about the, the North Dobson Gate. Is that going to change that people can exit the North Dobson Gate now? No. Not with this new operating system. If there is change, it'll happen later if the community decides they want to change that access. I, I, I don't understand the reason. I've never, never quite understood the reason for that. If you're going to check the license numbers and everything leaving once once they're in why wouldn't you let them leave and and yeah i think the reason that the exit was controlled at north dobson is the people would flow through like just use the community as a cut through so if with if that changes with the new operating system maybe we can change the exit protocol at north dobson okay and the other thing i have uh two vehicles and I've got the windshield device that lets us in. If, if uh, that does not match my license plate, is that going to throw a flag up or something? Yeah. If there, if our data isn't accurate, we'll ask you to update your data. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank yep. you. Let's see. My, question is i haven't seen a schedule uh presented uh we'll publish a transition. how long are we going to have to wait the full transition is going to take several months up about three months um three we, months for full transition we're doing one gate at a time one or two gates at a time so it yes i'm going to ask 
for the community to be and to have some patience over the next few months. Um, our transition schedule will be published no later than next week. So you'll know when the, the timeline. In your early charts, uh, the system can become quite complicated and sophisticated. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like an iPhone that enables me to make a call and receive a call. I would like a security system that can reliably get me in the gate rather than time after time on the north gate. Uh, and that's a mile and a half to the next gate. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Yep. They can hear me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. So, I, and I the the three months that Linnell mentioned that really is from our side. Um, as I mentioned, really my theme throughout this whole process is going to be to do it right the first time. It is going to take some time. We have to unwind some of the things that are there right now and understand how they were connected. But we don't want to get down this road and then say, oh, we, we found a problem somewhere. We want to just do it once and do it correctly. Oh. Hi, I have two questions. The first question has to do with the QR codes. If, so if say I have my children visiting and they're going to be here for a week and I give them a QR code to get in and out for that week that they're here. Are they going to be limited to specific gates or can they come in and out of any gate? They're going to be able to control. No, just, no, it'd just be the manned gates, the ones with the, um, the call box. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I think that's something that um, maybe the community can set later on. Uh, like easy answer would be, um, that decision will be made. I mean, uh, uh, the functionality side, we can really make anything work. Um, but that's kind of more of like your your you know processes, what gate you can leave from and, and what. And then second has to do with this came up a little bit before also how slow some of these gates are. Are we going to look at making those faster or are we going to tag homeowners who happen to follow another homeowner out and then block their access later? Well, I don't think blocking access is going to be on the list, uh, even in the immediate term, but I uh, I think uh, two things. The first one is, um, sorry. So first one's going to be making sure that uh, we get all, all the variables out. Right now, the reason it's slow, we, we just don't know. We don't know if it's a hardware issue. We don't know if it's a software issue, internet issue, um, the main server issue. Once we figure that out and we say, okay, well, that's all working but we're still having issues at two gates. Then we can start taking a look at the gate hardware and saying, okay, well, this is this gate hardware needs to be replaced or this option needs to be flipped from, from A to B. Um, I, we don't have a really good answer for that right now, other than once the operating system's replaced, then we can better answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Our home is about three doors from the uh, Rockwood gate. And Currently, people have to go way around to get in. Is that going to change, or am I understanding that it? it yeah, I'm not making myself clear. No, no, no. I, it's in, not in order, <laughs> in order for guests to get in through the Rockwood Gate now, which is three doors from us, they can't do it. They have to drive all the way around mm -hmm. to the Holly Gate. Mm -hmm. When this change, this change comes into effect, will we be able to get them in by? No, they'll still. So nothing's going to change with the Rockwood. homeowner access gates are for homeowners only. That's not changing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bummer. Simple final question: <laughs> When does the installation process start? That's a great question. April date to be determined, but next month. <laughs> no. That's when I'm back for the seminar. <laughs> well, I think we got through everyone's questions this time. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for staying for the long haul. I appreciate you uh, being interested in this topic. So thanks.
and look for more information and stay in the loop and we'll keep you up to date. A schedule will go out and more to come.